Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Garage Gym Athlete Podcast. I'm your host, Jared Moon. The Garage Gym Athlete Podcast is a result of my desire to build better humans, unequivocal coaches, and autonomous athletes. I've spent the last several years obsessing over program design, nutrition, and every other way you can optimize human performance. This podcast distills the latest scientific research with what I've learned and blends it with the not-so-scientific field of mental toughness. We are here to build you into a dangerously effective athlete. If you enjoy this podcast, you can find out more about our training at garagegymathlete.com. And if you want to pursue more into the field of coaching and programming, head to endof3fitness.com. Thanks for listening. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Garage Gym Athlete Podcast. Jared Moon here with Ashley Hicks. How are you doing, Ashley? Doing well. Good morning. We have Joe Courtney. Why don't you say good evening again? You can say whatever you want. Hi. <laughs> Nobody knows when we're <clears throat> recording this until now. Hi, friends. <laughs> and Kyle Shrum. What's up, Kyle? Hey, what's up? Not I have much. nothing else. No, oh, I wanted to start with you. What, what are your updates? Oh. How's life? Oh, okay. Life is swell. Um, so my, uh, my update this week is a couple of weeks ago, um, I got my bike tuned up. You know, I've been biking more recently. Road bike or mountain bike? Road. I'm not okay. brave enough for the mountain biking. <laughs> um, I'm too accident prone as it is. Um, so... But I, I got this, I think I shared it when I got it, but I got this old steel frame bike off a guy on Facebook market and um, I did a few rides with it, you know, and was just kind of getting used to it and went and got it tuned up. And man, a tune up on a bike really makes a difference in how it performs. And that was amazing. Really good. It's amazing. How Do you, how do you get oil changes in your car or truck? Yes, I do. Just curious. Yep. I mean, I don't feel any different when I get an oil change. <laughs> yeah. So. yeah, but what happens when you don't get an oil change? Have you ever noticed a difference if you don't get one for several years? No, because no, I've always no. had one. Done. Yeah, your your car would shut <laughs> down. <laughs> I just it. I, I, I get the logic. A few times. <laughs> I get the logic of it, but anyway. So, yeah, I did a few rides with just um, just as I bought it. And then got a tune up with it. And man, it really made a difference. I actually PR'd my mile ride, my 10 mile ride that I usually do. So that was really cool. That's huge. Yep. It reminds me, I think I need to clean my rover once it comes in, once it finally, the mail finally comes in with it, my delivery stuff. But yeah, it's probably time. Sand in your rower? Well, no, it's not going to have sand yet because it's just getting here. But I left it outside. It was predominantly outside in San Diego. Yeah. But you never know. The storage unit they put it in could be sandy. God, don't put that evil on me. Sorry. <laughs> I imagine a storage unit they use to like replicate a beach for like a studio, <laughs> for like a like a movie, and then they <laughs> put your rower in there just for storage purposes, like a dual purpose. Just, for someone that doesn't like fiction, you're just making up all kinds of nonsense right now. <laughs> no one said I have a bad imagination. True. So Kyle, all you got is the bike update, man. Oh, was that not good enough? No, because I I'm waiting specifically for from last week. What's your hot Halloween costume for the 5K run? Oh, oh no, yeah. I can't. I still still can't not. Tell. All right, nope, but, we haven't wow. we haven't ran we haven't ran the race yet. So, I mean, by the time this drops, we will have run it. But so that exactly. yeah, you're speaking in the future here. Think yeah. about being in the future. It's November, okay? I'm Halloween's just, over. Gonna, it's Christmas season. I'm going to I'm gonna drop a picture on you guys once it comes in. The The costume comes in tomorrow, so I will send you guys a picture tomorrow. But the podcast listeners will not see it until after the race. Man, that was a big reason I started with you. you no. Me down. No, <laughs> not happening. Down. <laughs> not happening. Hannah got hers in. Um, Can you tell us what Hannah is? No, because it will give away what I am. <laughs> it's All a right. couple's costume. <laughs> Pebbles Aww. and Bam Bam. <laughs> Olive oil and Popeye. Pebbles and Bam Bam would have been hilarious. Uh, Emily and I were Pebbles and Bam Bam in college together once. I'm not surprised. And then we were, <laughs> what was it, the the Brad Pitt, Angelina Jolie movie? Mr. Mr. and Mrs. Mrs. Smith. Yeah, we, we did oh, that Oh, so you one. wore a suit and a dress? <laughs> no, we did it the, 
where they're running around like in their underwear and white shirts. Okay. I wore scandals. I wore boxers and a white shirt and had a gun. It's crazy. Right. You, walk, you walk around with a real gun in Halloween, loaded. In Texas. No one cares. Texas, 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 yeah. <laughs> Fruit preface, Texas. I'm <laughs> kidding. It wasn't a loaded real weapon. Okay. Ashley, how's life? Good. Life is good. I had my second biopsy done yesterday and the boys got to hear me complain. Um, it was a lot more painful this time, but I, I think it's, they wanted more tissue. So they went in deeper and good gracious. I was breathing and wiggling my toes and doing everything to not focus on what was going on. But anyways, um, got some cool vampire bites as Joe said to, uh, so going to have cool scars. Not really. It's not really that big. But uh, Scott and I this weekend are, we're skipping Halloween. We said, eh, um, since we took Connor like trunk or treating or whatever, our friends are watching him for us this weekend. So we're going to do like a two night staycation. We're just going to go down to Destin and just kind of hang out and be by ourselves. It's going to be weird because you can like wake up when you want to and. Let's be for real. We'll probably wake up same time, but yeah, you will wake up at the exact same time. <laughs> yeah. There That's will be no sleeping in. It's impossible. True. true. Um, but it would be nice. So we'll, uh, we have like plans to parasail maybe, or do like some sort of boat excursion out there and just, yeah, I think it's good to get that time together um, every once in a while, if you can. Are you staying at a really nice hotel that's like, has that boardwalk? No, so we're not staying down there like towards, I think you're talking about like right across from McGuire's and whatnot. Um, yes. Yeah, we're That's not staying there. Yeah, we are staying. Um, it's like a little, it's like a sweet resort thing. Like it's got its own kitchenette and whatnot. And we always try to stay with something that has like a kitchenette of some sort so we can make breakfast. Um, <laughs> that's the financial side of Scott. Like <laughs> we're not going to buy every meal <laughs> for two days. We're going to do, <laughs> you know, something. So uh, we'll probably bring the blender and do our normal smoothies and eggs for breakfast. And yeah, but it is right on the beach, which would be really nice. Look out the window. There's the beach slash want to walk on the beach to it so we'll probably do some sort of like either eo35 k or i don't know we'll do something for a meet yourself on saturday that'll be body weight beach run for max distance that'll negative <laughs> ruin your ankles and calves for at least a day or two like the first time i went on a really long beach run was in destin and we passed a couple of guys rucking and i was just like glad i'm not those guys <laughs> Joe. From Today the was a sad day. Yes. Today was a sad day because after I worked out, I was walking around. I was still kind of sweaty and had my bandana on. And I, was, I had to stop in the BX for something or the next, whatever, the Navy one. And the command master chief of the base came up to me and said that bandanas aren't allowed. So I can't wear bandanas anymore. I'm really sad about it. Wait, like wow. to cover your face or? No, like I was wearing it as a sweatband. Like I, I know I always do, but they just completely said that they can't wear them at all. I was like, you've been working out. He's like, yep, just no bananas at all. I was like, oh, that just kind of. Did he give a reason for that? They just said it was like gang stuff. Oh you my know? goodness. Those infamous gangs of Bahrain. <laughs> hey, you don't know. Maybe that's, maybe that's how they roll. Did you have there. something like bloods or crips, like over your bandana? His are bright even, green. <laughs> I was, oh yeah. Today, today was bright green. I wasn't even wearing my bloods one. You know, like I called out about that in Baltimore. What kind of um, what kind of gang uses neon green as their color? I don't know. I, I love the just move rolls. the trees. The trees. Oh my goodness! Why don't you just anyway. move to a sweatband? Uh, well, I ordered some, but like, there we go. Some, I'm, just, nah. I'm actually full eighties, full eighties style. <laughs> but also, I think I'm going to use a a, a, a uh, loophole. See if I can get away with it because normally bandanas are like the paisley print. But I have like a Maryland flag one, a leopard print one, and some other ones that aren't Paisley. So I'm just going to rock those and see what happens. Hope you see the same guy. And he's going to be like, <laughs> what part of bandana don't you understand? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, sorry. Me, <laughs> but this defended. is a sweat band. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, uh, I thought you meant the one with the specific pattern. My bad. Yeah, I thought you, I thought you meant Paisley. Okay, this isn't Paisley. Uh, seems like people are liking strength, but uh, the first workout... Liz came back and was like, the first thing she said was, I don't like you. And then she walked away. <laughs> so we'll see how this does on our marriage. <laughs> and then 
And then lastly, I don't know if you guys realize, I just realized this a couple hours ago, but there's going to be more time travel between us, except you guys are the one that are time traveling and I am not because it's daylight savings and they don't practice mm-hmm. daylight savings here. That means for so, like four days, my child will get up at five 30 in the morning instead of six 30. Like that's what I'm now looking forward to. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll be well, no, the further behind happen. you. Yes. Gotcha. Uh, so I'll be nine hours ahead versus eight or whatever it is. So yeah. Even worse. Yeah. Kind of sucks. And I really sucked because I was real. I realized it looking at football and I was like, wait a minute. Game started at eight o'clock, not nine. And then I realized, oh, crap. <laughs> when does the oh, time change? I don't even know. This weekend. Uh, the first. November 1st. Yeah. All right. If my kids didn't go to school. I literally have no idea. Okay. But you're, you're, I mean, we can fade into you, but you're off dad duty. You're off snack duty. Yeah. So Emily was gone for about two weeks and she's back and it's great. I guess that's my update. I didn't even have that. I didn't, I didn't even have that down as my update. You're welcome. Uh, but yeah. So anyway, Emily was with the family with uh, her sister who just recently had a baby, and then we're going up there in a few weeks, so I can see the baby, hold the baby for like one time. Let's be scared of the baby. <laughs> I am not a baby fan. Um, in general, I hear you. Same. <laughs> so my my own babies were. Um, tolerable so mm. babies that aren't mine you know they're just scary they're so scary they're like so fragile yep. i just the, a little bit older i'm good but like i'm talking the super small baby they're scary they, they frighten me i wonder if that's an actual fear button. yeah anyway that's my my kryptonite right there small babies Writing that down. For yeah. <laughs> Were you reference. just gonna have a bunch of newborns show up to this doorstep? Smells like cabbage. <laughs> I don't. I don't get. I don't get scared seeing them. It's mainly just holding them and stuff. I'm kidding. It's not that bad. I have three kids. Uh, but if Emily did tell me she's pregnant for number four, I'd probably start throwing up. And then <laughs> I don't know. I, I would recover. But yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. You took the. You took it this direction. Um, <laughs> somehow. <laughs> All I was going to update everybody on is my squat and mile have been retested. So Whoop. I added 25 pounds to my squat. I mentioned that last time. I got to, what is that, 435? 35, yeah. And then my mile time. There's actually a story to my mile time. And I was saving it for the podcast. So I ran, it was programmed for Saturday. Uh, BCT track doesn't do meet yourself Saturday. We normally have like a run track day on the weekend. And this week, it was, or this past weekend, it was retest the mile and I did, but I was listening to my Garmin the whole time and Garmin will give you a pace, you know, like you can look in and see how fast your pace is. And I was looking and the first lap, it was like, you're running a four thirty mile. And I was like, well, that seems a little fast. So I should probably slow down. So I slowed down and then it said I was running like a, between a five ten and five eleven, And I was like, okay, let's just hold on to this pace until you can't and, and see where the mile ends up. And then the last mile, the last lap, I was super tired. And it said, I was at like, I was fluctuating between five fifty and above. And I was like, okay, nailed it. I, I seriously wasn't even looking at my total time. I was only looking at this pace time. And so I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to crush this. And I finish and I expect Garmin to, uh, cause after you, hit a PR, it tells you it's like PR and, and it'll like show on your screen. And I was like, Oh, interesting. Did not tell me I got a PR. So that's, let me check it out. And then I, you know, sat down, s- stopped the watch and synced it to my phone where I could look at the data and everything. And it was like, it was like a five fifty five. And I was like, what? I thought I was running super fast. So this pacing thing is only for that given second mm. is your pace. <laughs> So I must have been slowing down whenever I wasn't looking at my watch and then speeding up right before I would look at my watch. And this is all subconsciously, not anything I knew I was doing. But I also knew when I finished that mile, I wasn't that tired. I was like, normally I'm on the ground after like a max effort mile or at least significantly sucking wind. And 555 wasn't that bad because I can typically do with like one-to-one work to rest, I can do repeat six-minute miles. And so uh, 555, I was like, that's odd. I was super mad basically the rest of the day uh, because you can't just do it again. 
right? So uh, I waited till the next day and ran a 532. So I did get my mile down. And that one was more the expectation that it sucked uh, basically after the first lap. For laps two, three, and four, they all sucked. And I got 532. And going to 500 in five minutes seems, still seems impossible. So uh, even though that's a good, that's 13 seconds down on the mile, 25 pounds up on the back squat. We'll see. That's that's it though. That's those are my updates on mile time and squats. Hopefully, things keep moving in the right direction. I'm not sure what. Oh, I'm not sure which uh, estimate thing you had on the pace, but I know there's different ones you can do. Whether it's like pace now, and then I know when I did my 5K, it was like current pace, pace at finish, and then estimated time to finish. So there's different ones you can do for those. So you might just have to play around with the data fields some, see what might work best. But So I've actually changed it. And this is how I used to run. Um, this is a, before I had any wearable, I used to do this with, I think it was map my run on my phone. So I would run with my phone in my hand. Uh, and you could set it up to where map my run would tell you at any given interval, it could be 0.1 mile, 0.2, whatever you wanted to. Um, this voice would come on and tell you how many miles per hour you were actually running. And so I had it set to every 0.1 mile, a voice would come on and tell me the speed that I'm running. Cause I used to want to run a six minute mile. I knew that was 10 miles per hour. And so anytime the voice came on and she was like 9.4 miles per hour, I knew I needed to speed up because 0.1 is not very far, you know, so you're making these incremental things. So that's what I changed to on my Garmin. There are only two things that I look at on my Garmin now, total time, and how many miles per hour I'm currently running, which is similar to instantaneous pace. Uh, but for some reason it works better in my brain to know how fast I have to run, uh, with miles per hour. So Hmm. that would drive me nuts. I used to just look at my watch every 400 meters, like somebody telling me like my pace. I don't know. I don't know. It probably works. I look every, so I look 16 <laughs> times. I look every hundred meters Ooh. when I, when I ran on, when I did the 532, I would look at my watch. So nothing's telling it to me. I would look at my watch every hundred meters to make sure I'm, I think I need to run uh, 12 miles per hour. I think it is to hit a 528. I think I have to run close to 13 miles per hour to hit um, the five minute or below. So yeah. yeah, which I ended up running just like, I think I ran 13.7 miles per hour on my first lap and then like 10.8 for the rest of them. So, or something like that, or 10.5 or something. Anyway. Kyle, how'd you do on your retest? I only tested the back squat. Um, I was going to do the squat and the mile in the same day since that's what I'll be doing for the final test. Mm -hmm. And I had already eaten lunch that day. And running after I eat lunch just ain't <laughs> happening. I got about a lap and a half in, and I was like, "Nope, not happening." And then the reason I did I did it on Thursday because my weekend was super swamped, and so I didn't get back to it. But I did get twenty more pounds on my back squat, so I got my nice. back squat done, put up twenty more pounds. So, yeah, that's I think, awesome. I think the most on the so we have BCT track right. So there, I haven't looked to see if there's any quitters. I said I was going to update on the podcast, but I haven't. I think someone got injured. <clears throat> I saw it on Facebook. And he didn't even oh, leave yeah. the track. He didn't even leave the track. <laughs> he's uh, still he's, on the track. He's just, yep. he's just doing the, uh, he had a high hamstring pull and he is, um, he's just going to do the accessory work and he feels like he can still do some of the running. Uh, so anyway, I'll check for the next podcast, see if we have any quitters, but the overall results of those who are reporting have been pretty awesome. I think mm-hmm. everyone's getting 15 to 30 pounds on the back squat. I think 30 was the most, a lot of people hitting lifetime PRs or tying uh, lifetime mm-hmm. PRs and uh, some serious decreases on the mile. I think the biggest decrease we saw on the mile uh, was like 26 seconds or something like that, which is and these, awesome. <laughs> and as far as I know, I don't know everybody's mile time, but the person who did have that increase was not running like a 10 minute mile. You know, they were already running like a, like in the sevens and they got down to the sixes or something like that. So it, they're, they're pretty impressive uh, results all around from the, from the crew. So it's been, it's been fun. Do you guys have any females on the track? Zero. Hmm. Yeah. Not by choice. I didn't. Maybe next cycle. We'll see. We'll see. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And I would, 
actually like that data because I don't, uh, Ashley and I talked about this a little bit, uh, not hundred percent sure what the 500 pound back squat, five minute mile is for a female. You know, we, we kind of had that discussion, like what would that be for a female? And we threw around some numbers, but I don't know. I could be convinced. It what, seems like what, a what was yours? What, what did you end on thinking it would be for females? Like somewhere between 250 and uh, it's, I don't know, 250 and 300. Mm, I don't know. Maybe I want to say 325. 325? For a female? For all, for all the conversions that I've seen, it's usually you take the males and times 0. 0.65. 65%? Hmm. Well, yeah. I think it should be based off of body weight, body weight is, yeah. is what you would take into correlation. But the fact that the sample size of those on earth who have completed 505 minute is two, um, two people, <laughs> as far as I know, it's hard. Cause I know clink who did it. He's heavy, uh, which re really made the back squat look super easy for him, but also makes the mile super impressive. Cause he was like two fifteen or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. and the other guy who did it, I don't remember what his body weight is, but he seems smaller. He, uh, seemed probably like 190 pounds or something similar to me. So it, we, we would have to take that into account, but I know that the 500 pound back squat is like 2.7, 2.8, my body weight, something like that. Hmm. So, so Joe, what would that make that time? Like sub seven? I just did the same calculations and it, it seems really, really slow. 825. Hmm. You, uh, it's probably cause you added, did you, if you only multiply, so you have to take total amount of seconds multiply that by 0.65, then subtract that from the total amount of seconds. Mm. Sorry, I do a lot of math and programming. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's go ahead and hop into the study. So the study name is acute and long-term comparison of fixed versus self-selected rest interval between sets on upper body strength. Uh, so that's what they're, they're looking at. They're really just looking at uh, how much should you rest to get stronger and they had 33 resistance trained men that participated in the study. They were required to have at least one year of training experience, but they averaged approximately four years of experience. The authors note that all subjects had trained with rest intervals between sets of one to two minutes prior to the study. The purpose of the study was to compare the effects of fixed and self-selected rest intervals on acute performance and longitudinal strength gains. The authors hypothesized that training volume would drive strength gains and that volume would be similar in both groups. Thus, the, they expected the strength gains would be similar between groups. Uh, so I'll read what they did, like how they did it, and then we can go into um, some of our takeaways. The subjects, subjects were randomized into two groups. One group trained with fixed rest intervals, 75 seconds between sets, and the other group trained with self-selected rest intervals. Both groups performed three sets to failure for each exercise, chest press, seated row, shoulder press, and lap pull down, and trained three times per week for eight weeks. One rep max strength was assessed pre and post training for the four exercises the subjects used for training. Training loads were initially set at 75% of the subjects pre-training one rep max, and they increased their training loads by 5 to 10% for the next session when they completed more than 10 reps on the last set of a given exercise. And I'm not going to jump to the conclusion yet. I just want to get everyone's takeaway um, or what they found interesting from the study on rest times. So I felt like for the self-selected rest, that's always been kind of where I go typically. So for example, today's workout, we had some back squats and then we had um, like 60 seconds of each different movement. So with the back squats, it was like, you've got two blocks. So you, you choose the rest, but you've got two blocks to complete it. And then the next uh, part of the workout, you had self, uh, you had rest in there for you. And I, it just depends on what you're going for. So this is all strength, right? So for self-selected rest, I think it did it. You're going to get stronger with self-selected rest. It's fine. I think if you are on a time cap, like most of our athletes are like, they want something within 60 minutes, some within 30, you kind of have to make sure that if you are going to do self-selected rest, that you're still efficient with your time. And so that's where the you know, rest that's already programmed in can be good because then it doesn't 
you yourself won't go over that time. But if you're looking for strength gains, um, I think it can be found within both. But um, I think as long as your body is fully recovered, not fully recovered, but you know what I mean? Like between the sets, it's cool. And I feel like you'll gain strength with both the self-selected as well uh, as um, the timed, the built in time rest. Sorry. Kind of tripping up on words there. Yeah. I think it would be su subjective to the person and what you're doing. Um, typically I standard is depending on what I'm doing. It's like, I'll, t I'll try and rest around two minutes, but then depending on what I'm doing, I'll adjust from there. So like today with strength, we had eight reps at 65% and, I, and Liz and I were resting at exactly two minutes. And then we went from 85 or 65% to 85%. And I think, and I didn't even, look at the time when we, we, we went, did that jump because I wanted to make sure I was fresh for the 85 on field. But for the 65, I knew that I could do it. And so at two minutes, at two, at two minutes, we were doing our sets uh, in between. So it depends on what you're doing and how you feel personally. And then, I mean, there's even people like Liz who she doesn't rest enough. So she needs to watch her watch to actually like rest enough because she's go, go, go. And I try and get her to rest more. So, she, so like she's watching the time to rest enough to make sure they get enough out of it. And then I'm watching it because I just need, I just need a break when there's squats. <laughs> but does though, so my question for that though, is, is she failing? And that's why like you think she needs no. more rest or. Well, um, form somewhat, um, but she's not failing. I just think she, I guess being more, a little more explosive too, a little more quicker, just more efficient yeah. in, in general. Uh, but on the squats today, she, she was fine. It's just in the past with like, super steps and stuff like that. She turns accessory work into like a little more cardio kind of just um, like, if you go slower, rest more, you can do a little bit heavier to get right. this out of it. If not this, then yeah. The only reason I asked is because I know Scott's self-select arrest and my self-select arrest is way different. <laughs> <laughs> so in which direction Scott takes more rest. I don't need as much rest. So and I, thing. I guess. <laughs> yeah, that's how that's typically how Hannah and I go as well. Like we always do fit week together. And so like when we're doing the barbell lifts, especially, and you know, she's like cranking, especially since we have two racks now, so we don't have to like actually wait on each other to like change weights. Um, and she's like cranking through hers and I'm just like, you need to slow down. Like, <laughs> like, to, and she's like, no, you need to go faster. I'm like, okay, who's the coach here? You know, it's like, I know what I'm talking about. And then she's okay, like, my never mind. Never mind. Yeah. I typically will just like do my fit week in my coach shirt just so she knows, but <laughs> no, she, she does go. It's the same thing though. She goes through hers faster than, than I do. And I think it's because she just kind of feels like she's also just kind of used to training in the morning, right before school, she's got to get it done. So she gets ready for school to get going and all that kind of stuff. Whereas I just, I have my time during the day and I'm, you know, my self-selected rest. I can, I can rest as I need to. Um, but I agree with Joe. It kind of depends on, and, and Ashley as well. It kind of depends on your, your goals and like what you have time for. Um, so just making sure that you're efficient. Also intensity should play a role in your rest period. If you're going, if you're going heavier, you need to rest longer. Um, and if you're, if you're going a little bit lighter, then you probably don't need as much rest to recover for the next set. But also, they referenced another study that, and sorry if I'm taking, uh, stealing your thunder here, Jared. We I think that you did one. it intentionally. This is why I don't post notes. All right, <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. You can say, I'm probably not going to say something or something that you want to say about it anyway. Um, it seems that like um, self-selected rest works longer over longer periods of time. So there's another this study only covered eight weeks there's another study that went 16 weeks and like when they went for 16 weeks the self-selected group saw a much higher jump in strength than the fixed rep group um, versus this one they were the the strength increases on this one were were roughly the same the self-selected was a little bit higher but apparently over 16 weeks is the more you go it seems like the strength increases even more so all right go ahead jared <laughs> Well, that actually wasn't my takeaway from that study. So my okay. takeaway was, and my issue with this study uh, was upper body versus lower body. I think that it's very, very different. So the actual results of this study that we covered uh, within an eight week period, both protocols seem to be effective for strength gains because the strength gains of 
between both groups was very similar. However, more training volume was accomplished by the self-selected rest interval groups. So that means the, these 10 rep max tests or whatever they were doing, um, they could pump out more repetitions, um, and, and more volume in a given training session than the people who had the predetermined, uh, rest times of 75 seconds. Uh, so the, they're saying that it's more efficient to rest less, um, it, which we kind of covered, we covered in another study about supersets and how supersets are still very effective. Uh, but you know, they're, they're very time efficient too. That's why we use a lot of them, but to Kyle's point, if you want to go, if you're looking at intensity, I think it's just kind of common sense. So yesterday in BCT track, we hit five sets of, uh, three reps. It was, but it was working up to a triple. So like, uh, just a heavy three rep, there was no predefined how heavy you should go. And I ended up working to 93% on my last set of three, which was 405 pounds. But before I did that, I had been resting about two minutes in between sets and I rested about four minutes before I did that set. Cause I knew four Oh five for three was going to be challenging for me. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to rest longer. And it just works out better that way. I think when you get into lower body, because the study Kyle's talking about, um, the differences start to get pretty large. Cause that, that was mainly on, um, lower body that study. And so across 16 weeks, there's quite a big difference between people who rest one minute, three minutes and five minutes with people resting people who rest five minutes between sets and lower body over 16 weeks, um, is significantly different on the leg press, the bench press. There's still some difference, but the leg press side of that was, was much, much different. So just something to take into account, um, what kind that you're doing, but ultimately if you, if you don't have a lot of time to, um, train, like Ashley was saying, you can pretty much do it any way you want. I would just take this into account when you are doing like a heavy set of three, like I said, or a one rep max, like what was it we did on BCT Kyle it was like, a was it 10, 10 by three at like 85 or something like that. Mm-hmm. And that was yeah. it for the day, right? Like that was uh, yeah, all that we was were it. doing. There was nothing else. And it took me like 45 minutes to do. Thank it. God. <laughs> 10, 10 sets of three reps because uh, that's, I was just resting a ton between sets. Cause I wanted to make sure my form was perfect every time. Like Joe said, I want to make sure I was explosive as I could be. And I had the time, right. I wasn't in a hurry. So I, I wasn't like, um, a big problem. So I think, uh, I guess my takeaway is it doesn't matter that much but it probably matters when you are lifting really heavy things and need to recover. You guys got anything else? Nope. I think you hit it. Yeah. Yeah. I think you, to your point, Joe, like turning, um, like, uh, supersets into basically a CrossFit workout. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't, you know, I've, I've often thought of that because our body geometry stuff has a lot of supersets in it. And you could almost do body geometry as a CrossFit style workout if you wanted to, because the, the loads aren't super heavy. You could go through it super fast if you wanted to. And just like not, I mean, you could finish body geometry, all the body geometry, if you did it CrossFit style in like 15 or 20 minutes max, um, it should take 30 to 35 minutes, but. There was somebody this past fit week that actually combined supersets and they said it was a bad idea. <laughs> they regretted it after the first day. Yeah. And I don't think that's what you should do. I think that you should tax the muscle, give it time to recover, get back after it. Um, just based off of what we're trying to train, you know, we're not just trying to train this, uh, localized muscular endurance over and over again. Um, but you could do it that way. And I don't have any science on why it's bad. It's just not what we're trying to train. So it's almost like a misintent for the programming. Yeah. Is that a word? Misintent. Yeah. We're going to uh, go with it. <laughs> it sounded good. Don't go with it. Sounds it. good. It does sound good. We can name the episode this the misintent of rest periods. There we oh, go. No. Well, people will know after it's named if that, <laughs> if that happened. Uh, all right. Let's get into the topic then. This is a top five. It's on my top five list of favorite books. So, top five. It's not number one. We know <laughs> it, it could be number like it might be three or four. So many good takeaways. We're uh, talking about the book, The Big Leap by Gay Hendricks. Um, that's all I'll say. I'll let you guys take all the all the points. Yeah, Kyle, just take all the points. Just go ahead. Yeah, first. Take all the points and I'll see if I have any left. 
This is new territory for me. I don't know what this is like. I think the biggest thing that stuck out to me, and it's mainly because it's a big issue that I have. I have a big issue with time management. And so he talks in uh, chapter six about what he calls Einstein time. And so kind of using, um, kind of using Einstein's theory of relativity to kind of describe where time comes from and what time actually is. And instead of thinking in, in a Newtonian paradigm of time being this separate thing that acts on you and like controls you of thinking as time as something that comes from within you, that you make your choices on what you spend your time on and how much time you give to each thing and that you get to make those choices. And so that was just kind of, kind of mind blowing to me, uh, kind of, you are where time comes from. So you own it, you own what you spend your time on and how much, how much time you give to each thing. And so that was just kind of, kind of mind blowing to me. The biggest thing that I took away from it. Yeah. I think this book was is really good for people who really want to make a change in their life, big, big change in their life or big or small really. And have just been either dragging their feet about it or need a little help. And this is uh, kind of cool to how a different approach to doing some things like that, like uh, whether it's going after a new job, starting a business, starting a, um, being a content creator, starting a YouTube channel or, or anything like that. And some of the points that I really like is about um, not capping yourself and leaving your safe and make sure you're leaving your safe space because if you're holding your basically you're holding yourself back in, in that regard to where if you don't think you can achieve something, then you're already capping yourself off and you're already going to, uh, you're already kind of losing. And to me, that's, uh, it's a lot about managing your confidence and your expectations because it was, you, you need to be confident to actually take your big leap and leave your safe space. But you also need to manage your confidence in that um, you don't expect too much too fast and that you're not capping yourself of achieving, of achieving stuff or like even saying that you need to achieve something faster than you think you will. Um, but that it'll take a little more time, but yeah, managing your confidence and your expectations so that you can make big changes, uh, was a, um, was a really good point. So I'll go over a little bit what he talks about in the book. So he gives you what's called an upper limit problem and he explains what that means. And basically all that means is that you, we, he's saying we each have a limit to how much good we allow ourselves. And then, you know, we will either have like a fight with a spouse or, you know, somebody or do something negative because we feel like we've reached that upper limit. And so he's, um, he gave practical ways to look at behaviors to what you do to sabotage yourself, um, which I found very interesting. He talks about, you know, worry, putting blame on other things and not speaking truth to people. And I think that it's something that it's in real life, you can kind of stop and I would like to experiment in this, stop what's going on and say, okay, like, why am I having this, you know, why am I worrying over this? Or why am I, why am I stressing out over this? Why am I having this argument with Scott? Just to see, like, maybe there was something that I was trying to burst the bubble. Cause I've never thought of it like that. I've never thought that I had some upper limit problem. Um, and then he has different zones for you, which I, in my notes, I put, um, it reminds me of the one thing he wants you to find something that you love to do. Um, And that way you can find your zone of genius is what he calls it. You have like a zone of excellence and a zone of, uh, I forget what the other zone is, but um, anyways, you have different zones and he talks about how to get to your zone of genius. And he talks about, you need to find something that you love to do that you'd never get tired of doing. Um, And that's where I get stuck. (laughs) So (laughs) this book kind of gets me stuck on that. I know Marco will have something to tell me after he hears this, but, um, and then lastly, I love his mantra. Uh, Scott kind of does that every morning in his morning routine. Scott, you know, reads his Bible. He prays, he has, um, a good setup, but he also says something positive out loud. And he says it for multiple times. And he kind of talks about this in the book for the mantra and he kind of gives you a mantra, but I also think it's good to maybe change that depending on where you are at and where you, what you're doing within your, um, 
within life. So, you know, maybe saying something positive that will help you get to a new goal or whatnot. Yeah, it's a, it's a great book. So I think my biggest takeaway, uh, so the zone of genius thing that you just mentioned is very much like the one thing it's kind of finding what you're most passionate about and what you can work on. But I think a, a great way to, uh, hone in on your zone of genius. Kyle mentioned Einstein time. Like what, what do you, what, when you work on it, you don't really care about the time or time goes by super fast. You're like, wow, that was, can't believe that was like six hours. I feel like that was five minutes. So that's one, one thing I think is a great indicator. And I think another great indicator is, um, chasing energy as this is kind of like a weird concept or whatever, but like there are going to be certain things that we do on a daily basis that you do it and you feel very drained after you do it. So those things that make you feel drained over and over again are probably not things that you want to continue doing forever. Now, I think that's uh, part of life. It, you'll have those things. I don't think you can get rid of all those things, but I'm just talking about trying to find your zone of genius. So I'm not saying never do those things, but if, if your entire job is nothing enjoyable and it only drains you, then and a lot of people are like that, you know, that maybe your job is super stressful or like whatever, and it just drains you, then, then that would be a good indicator. You're not operating in your zone of genius. Uh, so chasing, then trying to find things on the opposite, like what, when you work on it, you feel super energized. You know, I think that's a great way uh, to look at your zone of genius as well. But my biggest takeaway, I would say from this book, like if you just asked me, you know, what, what was your takeaway? Even though there's so much good into the book, it, it would be self-sabotage, um, hundred percent self-sabotage. I think people do it over and over again. I think if you're not aware of it, you'll do it to yourself. Um, because you can keep getting to these new stages of life. Um, but you're always going to find a problem somewhere. Right. And, um, my life right now, like we're just at a really good stage, you know, we're just a really good stage in, in life. Um, and, but I could find a problem if I wanted to. Right. Um, and that's just kind of the, the human condition. But if you really focus on not doing that, um, it, it's a game changer. And I know it's a game changer for me because I think I had a lot of self-sabotage behaviors before reading this book. And then I became very hyper aware of them and were able to like shut them down. Things he talks about, like, uh, projecting your problems onto other people, specifically like in your marriage. I think that was a really big takeaway. Um, and another eye opener for me, because if I got super stressed being an entrepreneur early on or something, I could very easily turn that into a fight with Emily in which she had no business, you know, like she had nothing to do with that. It, that was all my problem that I was projecting. And once I started to reala realize those things, it was uh, it really was a game changer. That's why I think that this book is so phenomenal because it's not just like, oh, that's a cool, interesting idea. It made me change major parts of my life. And so that's why I think it's in my top five, probably top three now that I just said that. Um, but anyway, a couple other things I have um, were how to say no, I think is a, a phenomenal mm -hmm. takeaway from the book. Um, I've gotten really good at this, it, but it's taken a very long time. Um, I used to just say yes to almost everything. And now I say no to almost everything. Um, if I don't, if I don't think that I should be doing it, you know, or it's not something I'm interested in, or, you know, it's not, just doesn't align with my goals basically. Um, so yeah. And then I think the last thing is kind of a paraphrase from the book, but it's when you become the best that you can be, that means there's no more excuses for why you aren't making your dreams come true. And this is, this is like the fear that people have. And this is kind of towards the beginning of the book, but people think that they're being held back. Um, maybe it's a job or maybe it's your family or something that you're like, I would, I'm not at my true potential. And here's the reason why. But if you drop all that and you finally become the best version of yourself, you don't really have an excuse on why your life isn't exactly how you want it to be anymore. And that's taking full ownership. And I love that part of the book because that's just how you should live your life. Um, so yeah, I think, yeah, I have, I have a lot of takeaways from the book, but that was, that was most of them. Yeah. That self-sabotage you're talking about, uh, the one that stuck out to me, um, which I, I do the projecting thing as well but I think it was mostly where he's talking about, but the basic idea, I don't re remember exactly how he, he phrases it, but the basic idea is like the, the culture, the world that you grew up in, like within your family and, and things like that, like there's a certain level of success. There's a certain um, picture of kind of what 
your like someone in your family is supposed to look like and like a standard that your family is supposed to hold. And if you start breaking above that, um, how your self-limiting beliefs come in and say, oh, that's not what you're meant to be. Like you're meant to be down here in this level because that's where you come from. And so kind of stay down here with your people where you're supposed to be. Um, and it can be projected on you from people that were close to you, people who you're kind of surpassing in a way, but also just the self-limiting belief, like where you're like, oh, well, I'm kind of rising above my station. That's not where I'm supposed to be. So I'm going to bring myself back down. And so that's, that's, that's one of them that stuck out to me. And he says, don't complain about how much time you have. Yeah. <laughs> Which yep. is a good one. Which is kind of scary. <laughs> yeah. I, I try not to, people always do that for me. They're like, I know you're super busy. I'm like, no, it's fine. I'm not busy. Cause I'm doing exactly what I want to do. Right. Like I might, I might be doing a lot of things that has me tied up, but I'm not like dying with what I'm doing. It's like, no, these are all things I've selected to do. I'm not complaining about the things that I have, but they're, even though there might be a lot of them. And I think that that's really, cause if you came to me with an opportunity and you're like, Hey, let's do this thing. And I really want to do it. I would just make that possible with my time. And that's the same. Everyone has that same capability because if you, and it's amazing once you find people in these situations, like someone who has absolutely no time left in their day, but then something happens to where they need to start devoting a lot of time to something. And like, Oh wow, look at all that time you found. That's crazy. It's like, no, nah, you had it all the whole time. So. It's definitely mindset and mindset mind shift. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. The workout I'm, briefing it uh you guys got a short peek at it so i don't know blitzkrieg is already a thing should this be called blitzkrieg 2.0 i was gonna ask you guys uh, <laughs> blitzkrieg <probably>. cm <laughs> yeah yeah blitz or you have to CM. change the other one yeah it's just it's just blitz <laughs> yeah so it'll be blitzkrieg 2.0 that's what it'll be officially blitzkrieg 2.0 so as many rounds as possible in 30 minutes of push press five reps go heavy pull-ups, 10 reps, strict. Then you do an 800 meter row or run. We have conversion charts in the app if you're wondering how to convert all that. And then at the conclusion of minute 30 of those as many rounds as possible, immediately run 20 minutes for max distance. Then you rest one minute. At the conclusion of one minute rest, complete as many burpees as possible in three minutes. And your score is rounds plus meters plus burpees. And yes, the score is heavily favored towards runners. Uh, but every point counts, I'll bet, once the once it all shakes out. So none of us having truly done all the way through, I've done the Blitzkrieg plus 20 minutes of running, uh, but I haven't done the conclusion with the, the burpees. Uh, so yeah, any tips, pointers, tricks, ideas theories is what we should call oh, it. oh i remember this workout um this is one of those that it's gonna it's it's gonna be deceptive it's gonna gut check you a little bit because at first when i, I saw this workout i was like way way back when it when it first came up it was just 30 minutes and then a 20 minute run um and you're like i was like oh, okay cool it's it's an upper body circuit and with a little running cool it's, there's some rest built in cool and then i can just go for 20 minute run no big deal but with the row or the run, the half of the 800 meters, that will tax your legs as well as a heavy push press. If you're actually going heavy on the push press, you're going to be using your hips and using your legs and you're going to feel it in your, in your legs for that. But also because it's a heavy push press and strict pull-ups, your arms and your shoulders are going to be dead. And it's such a weird and kind of a terrible feeling to go start for a run and you can't even hold your arms up. Yeah. You're just like completely dead armed. So I remember going off for my run and they're like, oh man, my legs are tired. And then like a minute into it, it was, oh man, my arms are dead. I can't do anything right now. I'm just, it was, it was, completely, was your arms completely straight down by your side. It was basically like Ace Ventura when he got tranquilized a few times and he was just <laughs> running through the woods. It was basically like that. Just a lot slower. Uh, That's awesome. Yeah. I, if, if I, if I do the video for this, I might have to put that in there. Um, yeah. There were no tips in there in what I just said, so <laughs> you will. It was it was more of a uh, story. So let me I'll tell a story as well. <laughs> so, so how Blitzkrieg 2.0 came about was primarily a 
Chris Morgan's playful complaining. We know it's not true <laughs> complaining um, about this originally because th- there for a while it's, it's kind of died down, not intentionally. I think people have just gotten fitter. Everyone calling uh, Tuesday, meet yourself Tuesday because Tuesday workouts are generally pretty hard. Um, and this is one of them. And I think it just kicked his butt that day. And he, uh, he gave us a lot of, a lot of flack for it. Like I said, playfully. And so we've, uh, made it official and then added a little piece. Uh, and I almost made it to where burpees were the only part of your score to where it was. The only score was how, how many burpees you could do. But then I thought, what would Joe do? 20 and minute then, walk. <laughs> yep. Joe, would, Joe would sandbag the first two parts and then really crush it on the burpees. So I just made the score, all of it. So well, I could uh, never crush anything on the burpees. I'm just going to say that right now. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I don't have any tips either other than, um, run really fast for the 20 meters, max sustainable pace zone four. I mean, for the 20 minutes for the max meters Ah. and then rest that full minute in the fetal position. That's a tip, right? And then at the conclusion that one minute rest, do a lot of burpees very fast. So do them fast in nature. And that's all my tips. Maybe we should call it Blitz Creek Morgan. Instead of Blitzkrieg 2.0, we'll see how it all shakes out. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna disagree with Joe on this one. Um, 100. percent There is nothing deceptive about this workout at all when you look at it. You just this it looks, looks like from the start. this looks like my worst nightmare. I mean, it it seems a lot of seems running. Really rough. Yeah, yeah, that mainly that. Yeah, 20 minutes. You do five. You do five mile runs in the BCT. Not not after all this other stuff. And not with th- three minutes straight of burpees at the end. Anyway, I would say, um, yeah, just suck it up and run really fast. I haven't done it. so And I'm on BCT, so I won't be doing a Meet Yourself Saturday for a, a long time. So you guys just enjoy this one. You just and gave me an idea. I'll be sitting over here. Oh, oh crap. No. Dang it. I think I just made it better. I'm, a, I'm apologizing to the community. My bad. So I don't know what I did, but I'm apologizing. I'm sorry. Why did my... It went away. Anyway. The Blitzkrieg Morgan thing was the idea. I, I think it should be two, two, just two scored events. I think it should oh. be rounds plus meters or even three scored events. So like you can, you can place first, second or third in each event. So who can get the most rounds, who can get the most meters and then who can get the most burpees. I think that's what I'll switch it to. We'll just, but I'll, uh, logistically in team builder, just to talk this out as if this was a team meeting, Joe, we could do Blitzkrieg, um, work portion, Blitzkrieg, run portion, Blitzkrieg, burpees. That way they have their own leaderboard inside the, uh, might do that. It's a lot more blanks for that green dot. So then you can choose which one you want to win, or you can try and win them all, which is the mentality I'm shooting for. So try and win them all. It's like Pokemon. Oh my gosh. Wow. Okay. Yeah. You like that? <laughs> That's my fantasy for the day. I don't think it's not even I, okay. No, no, <laughs> no. Talk about no. Blitzkrieg. Ashley, what do you have to say about Blitzkrieg? All I was going to say was I did it and I, I wasn't as angry as Chris Morgan was. I'll just say that. So she's like, this is um, hardly memorable. I don't know. <laughs> no, I remember I it. it. <laughs> I remember it, but I, I don't know. I love running stuff. So, um, for me, I always go tunes, right? So for the first part, I would do a rock jam sesh and then for the 20 minute run do something with a little more tempo a little more beat to make sure that you get in more meters like jared was talking about and then stick to whatever needs to get you through for the burpees so whether that's somebody screaming in your ear a little <laughs> a little rap well, whatever. jacket you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> so that's that's my tip maybe just no tunes for the burpees and just oh gosh endure it just see just see what your mental capacity can do for you at the very the only reason why I would say that that was a good idea is because three minutes is a long time for burpees. And if you're listening to a song, they're typically three minutes. So if you're just like, Oh my God, why won't this song just end? <laughs> and it never will. That never happens to me. So I'll stick to the music. <laughs> Speaking of, I'm trying to find a song or two songs for my five mile endeavor. Suggestions. Okay. Music. Um, I'm looking for, so this is out to the community as well. Anybody who can come up with it. I'm looking for two short songs that equate to five minutes might not be possible or one song. That's basically five minutes. Exactly. 
because this is the song I want to get used to running to try and run a five minute mile. So I know if this song's over, you didn't do it. And the closest I could find so far, this is from my limited research. Um, I didn't like Google, like I didn't Google this, just uh, songs that I have, like um, which the the Eminem I think it's lose yourself. Hold on a second. Let me find it. That's not the song you want to run to. <laughs> I know it's not, but this is the only one I can find. It is. Yeah. It's five minutes and 20 seconds with like a long intro. Like there's like a, so if you waited to the intro to be over, it's almost five minutes. Exactly. If you were to start running there, that's the best thing I can find for a five minute mile run song. If anybody has anything else, hit me up in the Facebook group. I really want to know, or if any of you guys know of a five minute song, I also said two. I did find some other songs that were like two forty five that are like good, but I'd have, it's finding two of them that equate to five minutes. Anyway, did try flower by Moby. No, <laughs> <laughs> um, that's the bring Sally up song. Yeah. But... <laughs> I was about to say, how long is that? Uh... He's thinking about it. <laughs> I threw it out there as a joke, but he's thinking about it. I almost don't care what the song is. I just want, it's the length. I'm not that motivated by music, so I'm going to, unless I, I am the opposite of motivated with hard, heavy metal. So if anybody right. has that suggestions, just, just don't suggest it. Don't even worry. <laughs> I mean, you can, but I, it won't be used. It makes me angry and, and I can't channel anger to, I think that's what, where other people are. It's useful. It's like I get angry. So I lift heavier. That's not how my brain works. I get angry and I don't lift heavier. I like get confused and my mind stops working as well <laughs> see i don't get angry i just i don't know sometimes you need a good jam sesh okay so i did this and this is how i pr'd my mile time to under seven minutes was i used two i had to use two different songs so because one was like four minutes and 30 something and then what i knew the what songs maybe i'll just go four thirty. okay <laughs> addicted to a memory thing. by zed and then um because it starts out kind of slower so you kind of what you can't do you gotta have to go but um starts out almost kind of slower and then it picks up with each like minutes that's passing and so by the end of it you're going pretty fast and then i ended it out with swedish house mafia and i believe it's one is what that song is called that is also my 2000 meter row that's the last song i listened to to push that like swedish how, house how long is that when you said uh, i need a look but okay well, I'll check it out. I'm really open to all all types and forms of music, except for uh, jazz and heavy metal. Uh, anything else? Fair game. Gonna give you like some like uh, what, the monks kind of music. I'm gonna well, give you some Toby Keith. <laughs> what was it? The I was the one who added the uh, electric powwow drum to the. It's the first song on our. <laughs> Graduate math, I think, because like I was, I was asking about what music people music listen to, and you put said that, and I put it on. And I was like, all right, well, this is, this is something. <laughs> interesting. So just to show you, <laughs> just to show you how diverse. Like, I'll listen to something like that. I'll listen to Texas country, which is just it's country that where they sing about Texas. We had this discussion earlier, and then I'll listen to rap, and those are like I'll even listen to. I don't even know what the the genre is. They're just like there are no words. It's not necessarily instrumental. What is that? It's called. Um, electronica i don't know i don't know i'll, I'll sh send you guys a song you tell me what the genre is but anyway i'm open to anything i wish electric powwow drum was five minutes or else <laughs> that would be it because that's a that one will really get you going have you guys listened to it no oh, oh <laughs> no. then why are you laughing you can't, you can't knock sounds it funny. the sound electric powwow drum <laughs> I don't, it sounds like something on a, one of the shows my four-year-old watches. Sounds like, exactly. It sounds like a kid just going nuts on some drums. <laughs> kind of. about the, the uh, playlist, kind of though, is that somebody, there, apparently there's a genre called butt rock. I don't what? know what it was, but I looked up butt rock, and it's actually a song, and I put it on our Spotify playlist. So we have a Spotify playlist called Garage and Athlete. And That's a dangerous a thing to Jared's Google, my friend. <laughs> no, I looked it up in Spotify. I didn't Google oh, okay. it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It sounds like the opposite of a kidney stone. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I feel like butt rock would be somebody playing the drums with, you know. This has nothing to do with Blitzkrieg. Yeah, we got really far it's a good off tangent. Tangent there. Well, I was going to say some. What brought that up recently and had me laughing out loud was someone in the group found the playlist and they were like, they somehow blamed Jason Wood. <laughs> 
I don't know why. <laughs> they were like, Jason, what the hell are you listening to, man? And Jason's like, I don't know what you're talking about. I was like, not my playlist. <laughs> Joe made it. And the song they were talking about was Electric Pow Wow Drum. And that was my song. Oh, yeah, it was, um, who was it? It was, it was Dominic. Dominic was the one who called out Jason. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway, that was hilarious because I was like, that, that was my song. <laughs> Don't read the playlist, but that weird song is mine. Yeah. All right, guys, that's it for this podcast. Hopefully you got something out of Blitzkrieg. I think the ultimate um, <laughs> suggestion there is just to go fast and try hard as with anything and rest appropriately during your workouts and read the book, The Big Leap. So that's recaps that whole podcast. And if you're enjoying this, you'll love the training. So if you haven't signed up, go to uh, garagegymathlete.com, sign up for a 14 day free trial and you can try our training where we take a lot of the science into account and make our programming better each and every single day. And for all those who are part of the community, listening to the weird playlist, doing Blitzkrieg on a Tuesday and hitting these meet yourself Saturday workouts. You guys are awesome. Thanks for being a part of the community, but that's it for this one. Thanks for listening to the Garage Gym Athlete podcast. If you want to learn more, go to garagegymathlete.com. You can learn about our training. Let us send you a copy of our book, The Garage Gym Athlete, or you can even get featured on the Garage Gym Athlete podcast. Thanks for listening.